hello everyone welcome back to my channel i'm so excited because we are just back into the swing of normal life and i pledge to you i pledge to you that this is the start of the continuous vlogs once a week at least uploaded weekly vlogs daily vlogs whatever's happening in the week and I'm so excited about it. It is 7.50 a.m. I did the 6 a.m. class at Never Quit. It's Monday, by the way, so it feels good to start this. I um, got back from America on Friday. Oh my God, I have so much to tell you. I completely forgot I haven't updated you on anything. If I didn't tell you in the last vlog, because I might not have, I lost my phone on day three of Coachella, which was like a whole week ago now. And at this moment, I still don't have a new one. I'm using my spare one that's an old phone that I use for clients which doesn't have all of my data on it it literally I'm just logged into Instagram and that's it so that's a time that's interesting but anyway I really oh my god my egg slid off I just want to show you what I made for breakfast then I can start eating so it came back from America and decided I love bagels and cream cheese so I've done a bagel with cream cheese oh there's a bit of normal cheese I put on my bacon so I've got spinach one slice of bacon one egg Oh, and I'm gonna put like a Chipotle barbecue sauce on it too. And a coffee made at home. So delicious, I'm so excited. But yeah, I got home on Friday and spent Friday, what did I even do? I cannot remember what I did on Friday. Oh, we went to Tart. Oh, it took us like an hour and a half to get from Brizzy Airport back home, maybe more like two hours. We went to have brekkie and just chill out. I unpacked a bit. I don't even know what else I did. And then Saturday, I had a really beautiful like reset day. I went to Never Quit in the morning, the gym class, cleaned out the fridge, the pantry, did groceries, did so much. It's now Monday and I'm still home by myself, which has been amazing. Sarah is still overseas and Nathan is also overseas. So I have the whole apartment to myself for a few more days, which is the best. So anyway, there is a lot to update you on because I yeah spent the last three days in America with no phone. I came back, I finished eating. That was delicious. I highly recommend you make that for breakfast one day. So, my epiphanies in life. <laughs> I actually am not quite sure what they all are just yet, but essentially, like I was saying, I had the last night of our entire trip. We just had one random night where we were staying in LA after we came back from the desert where Coachella was before our flight. And we stayed in a hotel for the first time instead of Airbnb. So the couples all had their own rooms and then I had a room by myself. And that night, without a phone and obviously i did have my laptop thank god so i could still like the girls would like dm me on instagram and i would have it open on my laptop in case they were like going out somewhere or whatever they were doing or just to let me know what their plans were but yeah essentially fully disconnected like being in a city that i don't know i couldn't really walk or go too far i couldn't uber anywhere so i just had to really like be in my own energy in the hotel room at night so i got uber eats on from my laptop <laughs> didn't know you could do that until then um, watched a movie and then just fully like sat alone with my own thoughts and I was like wow this is the first time I've actually forced myself to be fully alone and I had all these realizations about how I am definitely someone that was like fully addicted to my phone and to social media and just scrolling and checking things checking updates like in all the sort of moments in between in life I noticed how much I reached for it even over the three days in America while I didn't have it so it was like the last day that we were in the desert and then when we traveled and when we came home and yeah I I haven't had it for a week essentially and there are so many moments I noticed like when I was waiting for the elevator or when we were yeah when I was waiting for food or on the way somewhere or standing at the traffic lights or there's just so many times where I'm like wow this has forced me to be so present and actually go inwards instead of being distracted and I honestly couldn't recommend it enough I'm not going to ramble anymore because I did share a little like lessons I've learned since losing my phone um, as an email to my email list so if you want you just go to my website Ellie Kate Media and you can subscribe to that because one of the epiphanies was that I want to obviously come back to focusing on my YouTube fam and the more like personal side of things and I want to make my newsletter a bit more personal too because if you didn't know I actually started a blog when I was like 14 and that is what evolved into a YouTube channel but Originally, I loved blogging and I loved writing all my thoughts down. So I feel like that's kind of like a nod to that era. Um, and then I also did a reel on Instagram. Um, so if you see like the video of me like journaling in a hotel robe, <laughs> that's the one where I talk about this and I would love you to read it. But anyway, it's Monday now. It's honestly amazing that I have the place to myself because I feel like I'm really still letting things sink in and having that time and space, I was like, 
oh my god now that i've traveled and now that i know that i do actually love traveling because before i wasn't quite sure it was like my first overseas trip as an adult and i just i didn't ever really have the itch to get out of australia because i just love where i live so much and i love my life i love my routine i would say i'm like more so a bit of a homebody as opposed to like someone that could just live out of a suitcase for like six months at a time i could never really do that i mean you never say never now but anyway all these epiphanies came through because i was like oh my god now i'm single and especially because both my best friends and their partners were the people i was traveling with and they're all older than me they obviously settled down in relationships and they were just looking at me going ellie you have the least responsibilities you're ever going to have you're single you work for yourself you have the ultimate freedom like there's no one tying you down you can travel at the drop of a hat now that you have the confidence from traveling with us you can travel by yourself and i just was like oh my god it's like the there's too many choices which is honestly grateful and blessed and i fully have cried so many tears of gratitude because I'm like what the hell is my life and I'm only just realizing like how many opportunities there are in the world so <laughs> that's where I'm at and I guess I'm getting stuck back into like I'm just looking through my emails from Ellie Kate Media my EA Foundations course starts next Monday so I'm definitely going to get this up for you before it starts because I have decided that it is going to be the last live round that I run for that course. So that's one of the epiphanies as well is I want to shift away from that and shift more into one-on-one -on -one work, whether that be with entrepreneurs, people that want to be EAs. So if that's something you're interested in with working with me in, you know, anything that I specialize in, let me know because I'd love to hear from you. But yeah, that's still all kind of evolving in what I see Ellie Kate to be versus Ellie Kate Media. It's definitely like there's something brewing, but I haven't quite figured it out. And I don't think it will be like a, there won't be a day where I wake up and I decide this is the direction I'm going because I'm obviously always so open to change and things evolving. But yeah, definitely still focusing on recruitment because I love that. I just love the people side of things, which I think I'm realizing if I focus a lot on online courses, I don't really get that because, you know, it's all online and I actually really like one-on-one -on -one connection with people so that's something I've realized too I don't even know what I'm gonna do today so I don't know what to tell you I'm just gonna jump onto my laptop maybe set some goals revisit what the goals I had set at the start of the year and see where I want to take Ellie Kate Media I guess I'm ready for the day we randomly had the pest control pest control guy just show up and I never know when they're coming I think because we live in a rental and the communication is just like not there so that was a little inter mini interruption, but I'm ready. This top is from Princess Polly. I can't remember how old it is. And then these are dish pants. Just ready to sit by myself at home. <laughs> I might go to a coffee shop later. Who knows? It has stopped raining. It's been pissing down all weekend. But yeah, don't know what the day will hold yet. I'm thinking about opening like an expression of interest for more one-on-one -on -one um, training is because as I said I think what I've landed on is that's what I really thrive on as opposed to like group online courses which I'm still figuring out like I still love what I teach in all ways but I think I like the one-on-one -on -one more and like more curated sort of custom bespoke trainings and offers so I think that's where we're going but the world is my oyster and I'm overwhelmed. <laughs> and I also need to look online at my options for getting a new phone because that's really a roadblock because there's so much content I want to create and I want to show, I want to make heaps of reels and TikToks from my America content and I don't want to leave it too long. And I also want to edit my LA and Coachella vlog. So a few things to do today. Hello, my loves. I have just got home from the gym and made some delicious breakfast. I had a coffee. It is such a beautiful day today, finally. The last, ever since I got home really, every single day has been so, so cloudy. The weekend was like torrential rain and then every other day has just been like on and off, cloudy, rain, a little bit of sun and then cloudy rain. It's just, it's not very predictable. But today is just absolutely stunning. Look at that. So that immediately makes me very happy, but also, Yesterday, I didn't vlog, but I did have a call with my mentor, who is amazing. I love her, but the call was nothing to do with business, nothing to do with mindset. It was literally just me rambling to her about 
my epiphanies that I had at the end of the travel journey, me losing my phone, and me just like not feeling clear at all on essentially what I want to do in life. <laughs> it's not even just work or business, it's literally like do I want to go and travel as much as I can? Like, do I want to, I don't know, be a barista so that I can, you know, barista around the world? Or do I want to be, like, focus more on content creating and just do, you know, my Instagram and YouTube like I used to with, with something on the side? Like, do I want to go back to freelancing, you know, helping people in their businesses or more mentoring one-on-one? -on -one? I know I really want to focus on one-on-one -on -one stuff and I think... I've mentioned in this vlog or maybe the last one that my EA Foundations course, which is to teach you to be an executive assistant, I decided that that's going to be the last time I do it live. That kind of came from this weird feeling of not feeling like that was going to be the path anymore. I thought, realistically, how many more times am I going to do that if I'm not going to be an executive assistant myself forever? And I almost missed actually doing the work and working with people one-on-one -on -one, as opposed to you know when you do an online course you there's this element of like the group and whatever but it's all virtual and it's all remote and it's all sitting right there on my laptop or you know it can be done from anywhere which is amazing and I think that's why I felt a little bit stuck at first because I was like if you have now just found out that you actually love traveling, why would you then throw away this like online business? Because that to me is like the perfect little marriage, like working online and creating the freedom then to work from anywhere. But it just really wasn't fulfilling me. Like obviously I love the role of being an executive assistant. I love teaching it to other people, but I, I wanted something more and I didn't, I kind of didn't want to make that like my bread and butter, if that makes sense. And I missed being creative. I definitely am so excited to come back to YouTube like really regularly. But then also on my personal Instagram and TikTok, there's this element of like, I just want to do that and have fun with it. And you know, hopefully make a living off that which it's not the reality now but like I can definitely make it happen I think <laughs> so anyway this week has been super strange it's Wednesday now each day that's gone by I've surrendered more and more to the fact that I don't really know what I'm doing and I put this pressure on myself to like rush it and have it figured out so that you can you know start making money again because obviously when I was overseas I didn't really do a lot and then I'm like okay I think that is not going to work this time and I actually just need to be okay with not knowing and I actually ran into Chloe and Corey at the gym this morning they were having a PT session while my class was on and Chloe was like what are you doing today Elle and I was like I have no idea and I am so excited about it and I'm so okay with it and obviously she was right there in the conversation with me on the last day of our trip when I had all these epiphanies and I was like guys I'm lost I don't know what to do so she's really been supportive throughout that and she's like that's great like just keep doing that keep creating space I've loved that I've been home alone this whole time I am picking up Sarah and her boyfriend from the airport tomorrow night so I've still got like two days and I've just been trying to not listen to too many podcasts not have too many things going on and just keep that space there so that things can come in and I've been journaling so much and it's actually a full moon this morning it's a pink moon and apparently we're also in between eclipses which means there's like some hectic energy going on a lot of people are feeling like change and stuff like that so what i've decided i'm gonna do is i'm gonna journal right now i'm gonna create like a beautiful space get the energy flowing and i'm gonna redo my vision board we're gonna go to office works like literally when else would I, what else am i gonna do you know and i have Put this off i haven't done a vision board for 2024 at all yet which is so unlike me i kept putting it off i don't know why maybe it's because this was going to happen so i need to make one i usually have it as the screensaver on my laptop and then also print out the photos and do them on an actual pin board in my room which i'll show you but yeah let's do that together because i love doing that and i pretty much always do it um with my youtube fam each year but this year it hasn't happened yet so i feel like the full moon is the perfect time i'm actually going to do some research have a quick look on tiktok look at some of the spiritual girls and find out what the best things to do are for like a full moon ritual and we'll go from there
Hello, so I have had the best day being in my feminine energy, which I've started to notice I haven't been in it for a very, very long time because as soon as I'm like, maybe like, I'm a bit of a dawdler, like I'm not in a hurry anywhere and I, that's a lie, I am in a hurry because I'm always running late to things, but it's because I'm a dawdler, if that makes sense, super strange. But yeah, in terms of like sometimes, I don't know how some little tasks will literally, even just like stopping to eat lunch, I'll be like, how did an hour just pass? I have no idea. Anyway, so this has literally been like an all day exercise, the whole like journaling for the full moon, which was literally at 10 a.m. and then redoing my vision board. I scrolled on Pinterest for ages, which felt really good. Saged before it, saged afterwards. It was just a whole thing. Anyway. I don't even know where I put my phone, but I went to Officeworks to print out my images. They're in my room, so I'll just start cutting them out after. I also went to Aldi because right near each other. I am still doing Cali Fresh at the moment, which I love. I work with them on Instagram and do like sponsored stories when I'm doing Cali Fresh, but I genuinely have been working with them and eating Cali Fresh for years, and I like am obsessed. So anyway. We didn't need to get any meals, but I got the like Eco Aldi brand of bench spray, some grated cheese, bacon, bananas, the Aldi brand almond like magnum dupes, <laughs> and also crunchy. Oh my god, I didn't check if this was gluten free. It is, thank god. Crunchy salted caramel milk chocolate. I haven't tried Aldi chocolate yet, I don't think. Usually I'm a bit of a chalky snob and it's Cadbury all the way, or I go for, usually I always have in the cupboard the Lynch sea salt caramel dark and that I almost reach for that they have that at Aldi but Aldi brand and then I looked at the milk chocolate one and they were pretty much the same calories not that I like ever count calories but I am just trying to be a little bit more cautious more conscious of like my daily intake um once I've gotten back because I want to feel really good in my body again and I've noticed that I am not as lean as I used to be essentially so and I would like to be so <laughs> it's as simple as that and I'm yeah just being slightly more cautious like I literally don't track at all like I eat HelloFresh for lunch and dinner and then have the same thing for breakfast every day so it's really just like the sneaky little things like chalky at night or snacks or whatever or iced lattes if I get one that sort of add up. So I just want to be more conscious of that stuff. And then I'm trying to go for a walk in the afternoon every day, as well as doing gym class in the morning. Usually I would just do like one or the other, especially when I was working like full time and had lots on. It would just be like one hour in the morning. It was either a walk or never quit class and that was it. But now I have the luxury and I always said I would do gym and a walk when I have the time and now I do. So I just, I can't miss the opportunity to do a walk every day because of, I live right near the beach and it's just beautiful. So that's my little ramble about like health and fitness goals, I guess, but that's what I got from Aldi. Um, let's go do my vision board. I felt like in such a more abundant, calm space today. And mentally, even though I have not done a single tiny ounce of work, work whether that be like emails content editing whatever i don't feel guilty for it i did for like a smidge there but not as much as what i used to feel so that is progress i want to focus more on my feminine energy sitting in feminine kind of by default instead of masculine masculine is very like do 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 go 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 where can i take action what can i do everything's like hard and heavy not all the time masculine is definitely required if you're you know being logical if you're maybe like doing your budget or you're managing your money or you're, I don't know, planning your strategy, planning your goals. There's an element that needs to be masculine for things to move and action to be taken place, like discipline, getting your to-do list done, all that shit. However, I've been living like so in that, that I've been like really hard on myself mentally and the voice in my head is like really, it's like, an, it's like a middle-aged man in there. And I, don't, I wanna be a little fairy goddess in here. And also here. <laughs> and that, the feminine side means also more surrender. Masculine is very like controlling and like they call the shots. Whereas feminine is like, I trust the universe, I surrender and we're gonna like co-create together. Like I'll do some, universe can do some. It's very like, you trust that it's gonna work out. What I need more of and also abundance, which is like, I did say masculine energy is like, you know, you're budgeting your, your money and stuff like that. But there's also an element of like the feminine in terms of receiving. I want to sit in my receiving energy of like being an open channel 
whether that be new relationships, new connections, new money, new abundance, new anything being, I really have realized that I'm, I've been very closed off for a long time, very guarded, very protected, which again, masculine energy. And I want to be more open, more receiving. I want to open my channel to receive, whether that be, I was, I was talking about this with Chloe, my best friend and Chloe's partner, Corey. He's like a men's mindset business coach. And I always love talking to him about like, when we go out, if we go out for dinner, he never goes out like partying. He's a bit older and he's done with it. But we went to Coachella together and I was like, Corey, I want to practice my receiving energy. Like I want to meet some guys because I'm the only single friend in our entire group. And he always gives me tips and he's like, oh, you need to be open to it. You like, where are times where you feel like you could have received, you know, whether it be a compliment or someone come up to you or something and you like, you block it yourself kind of thing. And I really noticed that in myself that I never get that. And it's also the mindset now of my belief of like, that never happens to me, so it never does. And it's not, it's nothing to do with like your status, your popularity, your looks. It's literally like how open to receiving you are. And it happens to Sarah all the time. And I know it's because she is in like an open receiving state. That was the biggest ramble ever, but I can tell I'm coming back to myself because of that ramble, so that's good. Let's go do our vision board. This is my old vision board. I was literally just thinking just then, just realized I made this vision board when I was living in my last house, when it was just me and Sarah, before we even moved in here. Like, it was actually only a, maybe two weeks before this place happened and we found out about it and we applied and we got in and all that kind of stuff. And because I remember, where is it, this one, it's like a white, smallish apartment building near the beach. And where's the other one? Oh, this balcony has beach views. I don't know if you can see that. And I remember Sarah, Sarah was the one that brought this, this apartment that we're in now to me because she works in real estate. So she found it and she was like, Ellie, I found like my dream apartment. Let's move. Like, will you come with? I really, really want to apply for this. I was like, oh, it's stunning. It's amazing. It's everything we've ever wanted, but it's such a stretch. Like it was probably like, what were we paying before? I want to say maybe $75 more per week from our old one to this one, maybe. Something around that, especially for me, because I chose to have the master with the ensuite because the other rooms, I didn't like how small they were. So I said, if we move, I definitely want the master. Are you cool with that? She was like, yeah, of course. I don't want to pay extra. So it was around that much more. And I was like, that is such a stretch for me, like with my financial goals, whatever, blah, blah. And she was like, why would it be on your vision board if you don't want it? And I was like, oh, you have a point. So that is the memories that this brings back. And I've literally, I achieved everything on this vision board by like October or something last year. The little, a few little barley huts on here, which I am actually gonna transfer over to this year because I didn't go to Bali and I would love to go to Bali. Now that I have the travel bug, and I won't be going back to America this year because it's very expensive. I'd love to go to Coachella next year again, but I think Bali's next for me. Affordable, close, I feel like everyone does it. It's not why I wanna go, just cause everyone does it, but I just feel like I would love it there. And I also feel like it might be somewhere I end up going back every year. <laughs> I'm picturing. Next Level Ellie goes to, to Coachella every year, which is in April. So there's an LA trip or America trip every April. And then does a Bali trip every like winter, maybe October for my birthday, maybe December for like end of year vibes. And I'm thinking that feels and sounds really good to me. So we'll see what the future holds. If you're wondering, I just bought this cork board from Kmart and then I just looped sticky tape onto itself. So it was like became double sided sticky tape. You just have to be careful ripping it off because it does rip out the cork, but I don't really care because I'm just sticking photos back on over the top. So it doesn't really matter. Here is what we were working with. I did accidentally print the photos a little too big. You could say on my last one, you could see they were all spaced out because they were a lot smaller, but I remember thinking last year, oh damn, I've printed them too small, but I ended up liking how it looked. But this year, I think we're going to have to do like a full overlapped moment without any gap. This is how she's looking. I lay all of them out first before sticking them down, obviously, to make sure I like the layout. And I think I've landed on this and I'm actually really happy with the size of all the pickies. I think it looks so cute. I finished her and I love her so much. 
let me I never usually like showed too much detail of my vision board because I do I'm not sure where I stand on the whole like don't share your goals until they've happened kind of vibe because I do get it and there's definitely like some elements of things where some goals are super personal or like in life there will be times where I don't share big goals because not like you don't want to jinx it but like what's the point in saying it you know like I I do agree that you have to kind of just show through doing and like take the action first and then you can what's the word like work hard in silence and let success be your noise like that kind of vibe like I kind of get that but also I want to show you so it's fun and for the longest time when I first decided because you guys will know this by now I've mentioned it so many times that I my long long not long long but like five to ten year goal is to own a coffee shop and then expand into like other venues and then eventually don't know if I've said this part online, but become like a property developer, like commercial property or in lots of property. Um, so that's obviously like a massive goal and it is definitely like a 10 year goal, the commercial property and the coffee shop's more like anywhere from like three to five, I guess, maybe more like five. Cause now I've decided I like traveling. So we're going to do that first. Um, but yeah, at first I didn't share that and now I'm like, it is literally so far away that why not? And also I am of the belief of, I'm speaking it into existence by telling so many people all the time because I'm so sure of it. Now I tell everyone. Like, I'm so sure that that is in my life within five to ten years. And I think me saying it over and over again, and b that has helped me believe it. And then every time I say it, I just become more and more sure. Like, there's no doubt in my mind that that's going to happen. It's just not yet because there's other things I want to do. Anyway, that's what I that's what I choose to believe is me sharing my goals with you, is me speaking it into existence. So... That's where I stand with that. Anywho, this year, obviously, it's already April. And I didn't reset this until after America because I just had a little inkling that that trip was going to change things for me. And it definitely did. So there's no... Usually what I do at the start of each year is, like, write down my actual tangible goals. Like, measurable, achievable, timely, like, all those things. I write them down and I work them out, like, quite logically. I'm like, okay, what can I achieve this year? What is a stretch what that all that stuff and then once I've got my goals that are tangible and written down I'll pick photos that match the goals and represent them to me visually haven't done that haven't really re reset new goals because I don't really know what the fuck I want to do but I've chosen pictures that represent things to me that I want to achieve this year or do so obviously the Canon G7X and the Australian Passport. That is like to me so specific and niche because that's the camera I have. Obviously I'm an Aussie and to me that just represents travel and vlogging, which is perfect. Um, this one here literally represents me and my best friend Neve because I've already told her I want to go to Bali together and she agrees. So that is something we want to do together. This one and this one and kind of that one and that one as well represent me stepping a bit more into like fashion content creation and, you know, styling and being a bit more like purposeful and intentional with content and photos like this and outfits. I'm really starting to love that. So that's what those mean. And also with this one and this one, they obviously also represent like content, but also I love both the hats. Like they're similar photos and I really want a bucket hat like that for my travels, aka for Bali. So I feel like that all ties in really well. I have a good habit of picking photos that represent like multiple things. This one and this one are obviously cool girlies in their travel era at the airport, which is me. And I love taking photos like that. And also doing that obviously is something I wanna do. A plain photo, this one is just like girl on the go. She's working while she's traveling kind of vibe. This photo is actually taken in LA. So I had that on my vision board before I went, but I kept her on there. This one and this one, I actually know exactly which villa that is in Bali. It's very bougie, quite pricey. So the manifestation is that I get that one. But if not, it just represents a beautiful villa in Bali. And this one is a girly pop on holidays, living her best life. This one is DJ decks overseas, like near the ocean, manifesting that, whether it's Bali, whether it's somewhere else. <gasps> I just realized I forgot. Oh, I don't think it printed. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Is it here? <gasps> no. My favorite, I found this literally yesterday on Pinterest, will travel for disco. It's written on a cap. That's just how the photo was. And then also I love this one. Also represents like coffee, travel, solo travel is what that means to me. I really want to put the will travel for disco. I might fit it in like here or up there. I don't know. Or it's so cute because that is me. And this one, that's obviously at Coachella, but 
this just represents like I want to travel to more festivals. I want to go to more festivals, whether they be in Australia or overseas. This one represents working from a hotel lobby. It, I don't think it actually is, but it kind of looks like a hotel lobby or a cafe, which I love. And that's all of them. Oh, and then my quotes are, self-love is the highest frequency that attracts everything you desire. I realized, I used to think I was very sure of myself, very confident and very like full of self-love, but I'm realizing I have some self-doubt that I can work through, which will in turn help me. And this one says, you'll be amazed at what you attract when you start believing in what you deserve, which is a similar vibe of like, I need to squash some self-doubt and start actually believing deep in my soul that all of this can become a reality. So I love that. I need to add this will travel for disco somewhere. I don't know. I really like how it looks though. We'll see. I found this spot for her. I really want to go on Pinterest and see if I can actually purchase that cap because it's so cute. She's going up. You can see from there. Perfect. Also guys, that hook was already there when I moved in and if it's not made for me and my vision board to look at directly from my bed every single day, then I don't know what it was made for because it's not, not absolute perfection. Like from my bed, it's directly in front. It's so cute. Oh my God, I'm so excited. had such a good day today i tried to remember to vlog most things but then i ended up just like literally sitting where i was sitting vlogging before just sitting there on my laptop doing a bit of content editing all day i don't even know the days have feel like they've gone so quickly but i'm just enjoying going a bit slower while i'm figuring out what the heck's going on last night someone did actually it was yesterday someone enrolled in ea foundations which starts on monday which i'm very excited about um but it is 5.30 and I'm about to leave and go and pick up Sarah and her boyfriend Blake from the airport. So it won't just be me anymore. So excited to see them. I'm not sure if they're going to be like really excited to catch up and tell all their tales of their travels or they're going to be super jet lagged and just be like mute on the way home. So I'm not sure what the vibe's going to be like, but maybe I'll have to wait to catch up with them tomorrow when they've had more sleep. But let's go.